Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As the United States experiences its worst inflation in decades, with skyrocketing food, gas and energy prices, we end today's show in Washington, D.C., where the Poor People's Campaign has organized a massive moral march on Washington, Saturday. The demonstrations being led by low-income people and workers demanding access to stable housing, health care, living wages, gun control and reproductive and voting rights. For more, we're joined in Washington, D.C., by Bishop Dr. William Barber II, co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, president of Repairers of the Breach. We also hope to speak with Dr. Liz Theo Harris, co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign. Um, Bishop Barber, welcome back to Democracy Now! If you can talk about what you're doing in Washington, as inside the Capitol there is this epic, historic hearing around the previous president attempted coup, um, the man who would not let go of power, but was forced to in the end. I'm wondering if you could contrast what we're seeing exposed there with what you're doing this weekend. Well, thank you, Amy. We are not the insurrection. We are the resurrection. Uh, and the resurrection of thousands of every race and creed and color and kind and geography. Uh, who are coming nonviolently to Washington, D.C., from all across this great land, to say that uh, the 140 million poor and low wealth people in this country, 43 percent of this nation, 52 percent of the children, 68, uh, 60 percent of black people, 33 percent of 30 percent of white people, 68 percent of Latinos, and so forth and so on, 87 million people who are uninsured or underinsured. 32 million people that get up every morning and, and, and work jobs that do not pay a living wage, less than $15 an hour. We won't be silent or unseen anymore. The time has come for us to have a third reconstruction. Uh, we had one in the 1800s, one in the 1960s. We need one now. That's about policy, reconstructing our moral uh, framework, political framework in this country. Because to have that this level of poverty that's untalked about too often and unseen and unheard is actually morally uh, indefensible, constitutionally inconsistent, politically insensitive, and economically insane. So people are coming. But poor people are coming to say, not only do we need a moral reset, and low-wage workers are saying it, we represent 32 percent of the electorate, now poor people do, and 45 percent of the electorate in battleground states, and it's time for that power to be organized, mobilized, and felt in every election uh, throughout this country. Now, when we look at what you see in these hearings, we have to ask the question, I think, why were Trumpism or Trump and his team fighting to hold on to power? Why wouldn't McConnell and them impeach him when they had a chance? I believe, uh, uh, Amy, and we believe this isn't just about personality, but policy. We witne we're witnessing a crisis of democracy because some of the people who didn't go along with Trump in this and didn't go along with Eastman's scheme still took the time to see if it was right, if there was a way they could do it. They still voted 99 percent of the time for Trump's policies of extremism, and they still believe in a, a political policy coup d'etat to suppress the vote, to rob the government of its resources by giving tax cuts to the wealthiest and to the greediest and the corporate interest that disempowers the government from doing the things it needs to do for the least and the left out and the workers and women. They're still the group that wants to take, to have a political coup d'etat and take women's rights to their own body. Uh, they're still the group that wants to block living wages, block health care, block addressing climate change, block police violence. And, 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 and all of these policies produce a, a policy murder. And we found out just this week that the denial of universal health care during um, COVID, for instance, has cost 330,000 lives. We found out that because of Trump and his uh, allies' policies in the beginning of COVID, Poor people died at a rate of two to five times higher than anyone else in this country. 
So we are the contrast. What you saw January 6th was the insurrection. What you see on Saturday is a resurrection. It's a resurrection of people coming together to mass poor people's low-wage workers' assembly and moral march to the polls. And we are calling on people to still join us at 3rd in Pennsylvania at 9.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. Liz Theo Harris is also with us, the Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, who is co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign and president, um, also executive director of the Kairos Center at Union Theological Seminary. Um, Liz, welcome back to Democracy Now! If you could uh, talk about the significance of this march, and this coming at a time where a Yale study just came out saying that something like 338 thousand people who died of COVID-19 during the pandemic in the United States, a third of the people died unnecessarily, could have been saved if the U.S. had Medicare for all. Can you talk about how health care um, is a basic right as one of the tenets of what uh, people are calling for in Washington? Well, thanks so much, Amy, and it, it is great to be back. And, and as Bishop Barber said, and as you just referenced, um, this study came out this week that, that says that, yeah, a third of the people um, and uh, it, who did not have health care uh, would not have died um, from this pandemic. Well, what we in the Poor People's Campaign have been putting out, and we, we did a study with, with Jeffrey Sachs and, and with folks over at Columbia University that showed that that between two and five times the number of poor people from poor communities died from the pandemic than richer communities and richer people. And 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 again, this is because of these underlying issues um, of, of health inequality, of, of poverty, of low wages. And so indeed, uh, when we gather on Pennsylvania Avenue uh, on Saturday and we hear the, the voices, the stories, but also the solutions coming out of poor and low income people's uh, experience and, and, and lives, um, we will surely hear about the, the need for, for health care. As Bishop Barber has said, we, we need health care to be connected to people's bodies, not to their jobs. Um, and how is it in this rich nation that spends more money on health care than any other nation with a, a, a comparable economy um, still still has the, the kind of poor health outcomes, um, still has 87 million people who before the pandemic were uninsured or underinsured, and even some who more who have, you know, tens of thousands who have lost their, their health care coverage in the worst public health crisis in, in generations. And, and, and again, this just does not have to be. Uh, it, it, it actually, uh, you know, we could we could spend less on health care um, and, and lead healthier lives and everyone could have universal coverage. We need to expand Medicaid, but we also need to, you know, implement a single payer universal health care system. And and again, this will lift society from the bottom. And and so this and then the 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 cry and demand for for living wage jobs, for for adequate housing, for immigration reform, for for protecting this democracy, they're all connected. And we, we see the interconnections, the intersections of, of the denial of health care, the destruction of our environment, the militarization of our communities, um, and and the, the problems of poverty and low wages that, that are in, uh, infecting almost half of the population um, and, and therefore, you know, bringing this impoverished democracy to a real crisis. Liz Theo Harris, you've also said that declaring war is a declaration of war on the poor. Explain. So, uh, you know, that actually comes from, from Dr. King and from many that have, have come before. But uh, Dr. King, you know, when he comes out against the Vietnam War all those years ago, says that, that war in all its form is a war on the poor and it's cruel manipulation of the poor. And, and we're seeing this today. I mean, we, we don't have a draft in this country, but we have a poverty draft. Um, and, and, and 22 veterans commit suicide every day in this country because of the, the, the moral costs of war. And if we look at, you know, the, our, our military budget, 
53 cents of every, every discretionary dollar goes to the military. We can't even spend 15 cents on health care and living wage jobs and investments in our children and, and in anti-poverty programs combined. Um, you know, this, this disproportionately impacts poor people, and that's poor people in the United States, and that's poor people across the world. Um, as Dr. King said, you know, you have poor people come together from, from this rich nation to go and kill poor people across the world. And, and we're seeing this. Um, you know, uh, across the world, uh, you know, in this moment as well. Bishop Bello, uh, B Bishop Barber, um, this is Pride Month, and there have been serious attacks or attempted attacks from Coeur d'Alene uh, to the Bay Area. Um, you had Patriot Front uh, in Coeur d'Alene, a small army uh, stop uh, police before they attacked a Pride March. Can you talk about the far right um, uh, and the white supremacists using Christianity um, to justify what they're doing? Well, I don't call them right. I never use the term far right and far left. I think those terms are problematic. And one of the things the Poor People's Campaign is saying is we need to have a moral conversation about right versus wrong, constitutional versus unconstitutional. Uh, uh, um, and that's part of our problem. Uh, the, the reality is that that's heresy. Anytime you use religion to justify violence, against gay people, against women, against the poor, against any segment of the community, when you use it to suppress the vote, when you use religion to try to block uh, living wages and health care, uh, it is exactly wrong. One of the reasons it's wrong from a moral and a religious standpoint is because those become the policies of death. You know, every piece of regressive policy uh, uh, costs lives. When you deny health care, it costs lives. When you attack LGBT communities, you cost lives. When you allow guns to flourish in the society, people to walk around with AK-47s, you cost lives. When, when you block living wages and people moving up out of poverty, we knew that even before uh, COVID hit, poor people were dying at a rate of 700 people a day, nearly 30 people an hour uh, per day, 250,000 a year from the effects of poverty. That is contrary uh, to the biblical call to life. It is contrary to the call of the ancient prophets that says, woe unto those who legislate evil and rob the poor of their rights and make women and children their prey, P-R-E-Y. is contrary to the call of Jesus that we're supposed to be about life and good news to the poor. And it's contrary to the Declaration of Independence that we are supposed to be about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and contrary to the Constitution promised to establish justice and equal protection under the law. We are a movement of life. What we're saying is, and on Saturday, we're having black people, white people, brown people, Asian people, native people, gay people, straight people, Republicans, Democrats, veterans, non-veterans. These are the voices you will hear, poor and impacted people on the stage. It's not a, a march and a rally and an assembly, really. We have for, 10 seconds. For, uh, for people to come and talk for people, people will talk for themselves. We are the resurrection and not the insurrection. Well, we want to thank you both so much for being with us, Bishop Dr. William Barber and Dr. Liz Theo Harris, co-chairs of the Poor People's Campaign, holding the Mass Poor People's Assembly and Moral March on Washington on Saturday. Oh, and Liz, I also want to congratulate your sister, Jean Theo Harris, the film The Rebellious Life of Mrs. Rosa Parks, based on Jean's best best-selling book by the same title, just premiered last night at the Tribeca Film Festival, directed by our former Democracy Now! producer, Yoruba Richin, as well as Johanna Hamilton. It is fantastic not to be missed by anyone. It was at the Tribeca Film Festival. And that does it for our show. Democracy Now! is produced with Renee Fels, Mike Burke, Dina Guzder, Messiah Rhodes, Nermeen Sheikh, Maria Tarasena, Tammy Wormanoff, Camille Baker, Charina Ndura, Sam Alcoff, Tamari Astudio, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Honey Masood, Mary Conlon. On on Monday, a Juneteenth special. Don't miss it on Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. Stay safe.